What's up guys? Learning with Rich here. In this video, we are going to talk about Clash Detective. So we are now going to check if we have clashes in our project. Okay? Clash Detective, so it can help us to reduce the risk of human error during the model inspection. Okay? Because Clash Detective, it will enable us to search through our total project model, identifying cross-discipline uh, clashes earlier in the design process or during the construction okay so let's click the clash detective so let's click that one and then this is now the window so as you can see it says here there are currently no clash test defined okay so what we are going to do we are going to create a new clash test just click add test and it will now create a new test so let's double click that to rename so i'm gonna rename that to mep versus structure enter okay so this is the clash test that i want to run on my project okay so before we go to the clash detective so let me just quickly show you some of the options that you can use before or that you can set up before you use your clash detective so let's go to options okay and then after that you can see here your tools and then you can select your Clash Detective. Okay, so these are the options that you can use in your, uh, that you can set up on your Clash Detective before you start. So the first one here is View in Context Zoom Duration here. Okay, so basically when you use this uh, functionality, so this value, this value that you are going to type here in seconds, Okay, so this value specifies how long it takes for the view to zoom out. Okay, so if you are going to use an animated transition. Okay, the other option here is view in context pause. So the default here is one second. So when you use this option here or when performing a view in context, option so the view remains zoom out as long as you hold the button so if you click or quickly click rather than press and hold the button so these values let's say you specify here one second so this value specifies how long the view stays zoomed out so that the transition is not cut in mid flow okay the other option here is animated transition uh, duration Okay, so when you click on a clash in the results grid of the clash detective window, so this value, like uh, this two second, so this value is used to smooth transitions from the current view to the next. Okay, and then another option that you can modify here is the dimming transparency. So from the name itself, so this is to specify the level of transition or the level of transparency of items not involved in clashes so you can control here so the dimming transparency now the other option here that you can check and uncheck if you want so use wireframes for transparent uh, dimming okay so we use this to display items not involved in clashes as wireframes if you check this one Okay, and then another option here is auto zoom distance factor. Okay, so what's this one? So this is to specify the level of zoom applied to a clash in the scene view when it is selected in the results tab here on our results tab. Okay, so the default setting here is 2. So 1 is the maximum level of zoom and four is the minimum level of uh, zoom okay and then some other options here that you can modify organize image into subfolders which is recommended so share rules between projects enable multi-threading and you can specify here the custom highlight colors so you have item one and item two colors Okay, so these are the options that you can use in Clash Detective Tool. Alright, so I'm going to select now here. Okay. Okay, so now the next thing that 
we are going to specify here is this is our by the way this is our uh, test panels okay so this is our test panel so you can see here the summary of your clashes okay so if you run the clash test so it will put here the last run of your clash test so let's say if i run it now so it will put here like monday uh, july 29 2024 and with this specified time something like that and then here it will show you the total number of clashes it will open up or it will show you the open clash and then it will show you also the number of issues that is already closed okay so what are the buttons that we can see here we already know the add test right so add test you can actually right click here as well so you have add test update all reset all tests compact all tests etc etc okay so that is context menu so you just need to right click and then you can see these options here so we have here also these options okay right so that is our uh, test panel so let us talk about the tabs here so we have the rules select results and report okay so let's go to the rules okay so that's the rules tab okay so the rules tab here it says how many options that we have so we have four options so items in same layer so basically this rule will ignore uh, clashes between items that are that are on the same uh, layer in the model okay and then the next option here is items in same group block or cell so this rule will ignore clashes between items that are part of the same group or same block or same cell in the model okay so it, that's why it says here ignore okay so what is this one items in same file so this rule will ignore clashes between items that exist within the same file okay so this is useful if you are comparing multiple files and only want to find clashes between items from different files okay so that's also useful then the other one here is items with coincident snap points so this rule will ignore clashes between items that have uh, let's say coincident snap points meaning their uh, geometric points of contact are coincident or the same okay so these ignore rules that we have here it will helps us to filter out and ignore certain types of uh, clashes that may be less relevant or intended to be ignored during the clash detection so usually i ignore the flexible docs or flexible pipes during the clash detection so you can you can do that here in Navisworks as well okay so this helps us in focusing in more critical clashes that needs a uh, resolution because there are some clashes that is not actually a clash okay so what else do we have here so do we, we also have the select tab so select tab okay as you can see i already named it like mep versus structure so what i'm gonna do is here on my select tab so this is my selection A, this is my selection B. I can change here the type, so like compact or properties, like that, right? So, but I'm just going to change that to standard and then standard. So MEP, I'll expand this one. I want that MEP. And then for this one, I want structure. Okay. So let me just move the slider down. Okay, so now let's talk about the buttons. Okay, so the geometry type buttons. So clash tests can include the clashing of surfaces, lines, uh, and points. Okay, so this is the default option. Clashes, items, surfaces. And then the next one is clashes items with center lines, for example, pipes. And then you also have here uh, laser points. And then this option here, self-intersect. So you can click the 
self intersect button if you want to test the geometry selection in the same pane against itself so in addition to testing it against a geometry selection in the other pane okay the other one here is use the current selection so you can select geometry for clash testing directly in the scene view okay and in the selection tree dockable window here this is our selection tree okay so when you have selected the required items okay click this i uh, this option here to create the corresponding clash set now the other option here is select in scene so you can uh, click this option to set the focus in the scene view and in the selection tree dockable window okay this is our uh, selection tree to be the same as the current selection in the selection pane on the select tab okay so these are the buttons that we can use and then another thing that you can set up here are the settings so what type of clash that you want okay so by default it's hard okay so two objects actually intersect if you use your hard so that's what happens if you use this option so two objects that is actually intersecting okay and then we also have here hard conservative so two objects are treated as intersecting even though the geometry triangles do not okay now if you want to put a clearance on that test okay so you can select clearance and then you can specify the clearance here okay and then you also have uh, duplicates so duplicates to intersect two objects it must be identical both in type and position so this type of clash testing may be used to clash the entire model against itself so this enables you to detect any items in the scene that may have been duplicated by mistake okay so these are the options that uh, you can specify here so you can specify the clearance value here or the tolerance value here okay right so on our next video we are going to talk about or we are going to run the test and then talk about the results tab and report tab so basically this is the user interface of of clash detective tool in navisworks manage okay so hopefully you learned something from this video thank you for watching have a nice day